Hi, I'm Alex with PEX Universe, and in this video I want to walk you through the differences between tankless water heaters and storage water heaters. And this isn't in favor of either tankless or storage, I just want to walk you through the pros and cons of each. So first of all, a traditional water heater stores and heats 30 to 50 gallons of water, and then that water is used whenever someone showers, does laundry, does the dishes, and then the water reheats after it refills into the tank. The storage tank layers hot water at the top and cold incoming water at the bottom so that as you draw off hot water from the top you get consistently hot water until the hot water is nearly depleted. The first hour rating tells you how many gallons of hot water can be delivered in an hour. Tankless heaters on the other hand use a heat source such as electric or gas to heat the water on demand so that you get the hot water whenever you want and it doesn't have to store it inside the tank. There are coils throughout the body and under the coils is usually a gas pilot light that heats the water on demand. You can find gas tankless heaters from brands such as Takagi and Bosch from our site. You can find electric tankless water heaters from brands like A.O. Smith, Bradford White, and Bosch from our site as well. And the links are in the description. So I'll go over the pros and cons of tankless water heaters first. And the most obvious one is that they deliver on-demand hot water all the time. So it's estimated that about two to three gallons of hot water can be delivered per minute. So it makes these great for families. This means that if you're not using your hot water, your water heater is not working at all. So it saves energy. And according to energy.gov, for homes that use less than 41 gallons of water per day, they can be 24 to 34% more efficient than conventional storage tank water heaters. Another thing that's nice about these is that if you install them properly, they can look really nice in your home. And since they're smaller, they can be installed in more places than conventional tanks. And this is better for smaller unit homes too. Tankless heaters can last more than 20 years, which is almost double a traditional storage tank's life. So you're gonna save money by not having to install more in the future. And like I mentioned before, these are more energy efficient. So since they burn less fuel, as fuel becomes more expensive in the future, you're going to notice your savings more. The last positive I want to point out is that when tankless heaters fail, they won't leak because most tankless heaters have built-in sensors that let you know by an error code when they're leaking so you can fix the problem before it causes any real damage. The first and most noticeable downside of tankless heaters is the higher initial cost. So these can cost anywhere from $2,500 to $4,500 when you include installation price. And I should also note that when you're retrofitting your installation by replacing a traditional storage tank, it's gonna add to the cost because there's more complications. Electric tankless water heaters, which are large enough to serve an entire home, require huge current draws. So sometimes this can require extra breakers and wiring and this can get expensive as, it need, as it's necessary for all the current that's needed. Proponents of tankless heaters say that you will make your initial purchase back due to energy savings, but this could take 20 to 40 years depending on your usage, according to one study by the Center for Energy and Environment. Another downside is that a lot of tankless heaters have a processor chip that runs the entire machine. So in the event that you lose power to your home, you're also gonna lose your hot water. Tankless heaters usually need an annual or biannual flush to clean the system out, depending on how hard your water is. So the harder your water, the more often you're gonna to need to flush. So this is something you'll have to figure out and it's pretty important for the system. To do this, you pump a solution like FlowAid through the burner system in the heater to remove all of the calcium deposits from the hard water. If you have one or two people in your house, you can wait around three years to flush your system. And if you have a water softener in your system, you can wait up to five years before you flush the heater. Now I wanna go over the pros and cons of a traditional tank water heater. And like I mentioned before, the first and most obvious one is that these are a lower initial cost and they can just be half as much as a tankless water heater when you include installation prices. Consumer reports found the cost of tankless models to range from $800 to $1,150, plus about $1,200 for installation compared with $300 to $480 for storage water heaters with a $300 installation. Another advantage for storage tanks is that these are easier to replace and once they're installed, they require less maintenance. And like I mentioned before, with tankless heaters, these will still give you hot water if your power goes out because since the tank is filled with hot water, it's not going to cool down once you lose electricity. So you can use the hot water that's in your tank when you have no power, but it just won't replenish with hot water. Overall, these are better if you're working with a limited budget or if you just need to make a quick replacement. 
So now I'm just going to go over the cons of storage tanks. And the most obvious one, and the one that has the biggest impact, is that these can run out of hot water, which is different than tankless water heaters. And anyone that's taken a shower after someone else who's used a ton of hot water knows that it's a terrible experience with the storage tanks because you just have no hot water left. Another downside is that these are larger and harder to place in your home. And once you do place them somewhere, they kind of just don't look as good as tankless heaters, which you may or may not care about depending on where it's placed. As I mentioned before, storage tanks have a higher utility bill because they're constantly heating and reheating the water to keep it at a preset, te preset temperature. So if you imagine 40 gallons of water at a constant temperature of 110 degrees, this uses a lot of energy. And this is especially noticeable in the winter because it's cold in, say, your cellar, and it's the cold is seeping into through the tank and just making your water colder and making it work harder to keep the water hot. These also have a shorter life than tankless heaters and only last about 10 to 15 years, more often 10. This means there's more turnover and therefore you have to buy them twice as often as tankless water heaters. So let me know in the comments section which one you prefer and give you a reason why because I'm very interested. Maybe you can help other people out because there's always people in the comments section looking for help. Uh, if you like the channel, subscribe and you'll receive the most up-to-date videos we make.